Happy Saturday morning. This is Brent with Lackens Motorsports. These are the pistons for our 397 tunnel port dyno mule engine. I uh, received these a couple weeks ago. Been sitting on them. Uh, thinking about if I should go ahead and uh, weigh and measure and hang them on the rods. Uh, there is a <laughs> slight risk with going ahead and doing that in the event that piston valve clearance isn't uh, isn't enough but uh, these things have a ton of valve relief and uh, cam doesn't have a ton of overlap it does have some uh, what's needed for uh, a factory head and we are looking at uh, about 700 to lift so trying to talk myself into uh, going ahead and playing with this combination and uh, getting it done and out of the way. I think I'll go ahead and do that. Um, free up some room, got a ton of boxes in here, parts coming in for different builds and uh, get these assembled and put in my piston and rod uh, holding fixture. But um, here's a look at one of the pistons. 7 cc dome, four and a quarter bore vertical gas ports. These are lefts and rights. So if you notice, valve reliefs are not in the same spot because these are um, a Ford FE head is symmetrical about the center of the cylinder head. Um, so that means in actuality, if this were number one piston, this would be number two. And then we would have this for number three and this for number four. So you have to pay attention. Some pistons are, are made like that. You have to pay a lot of attention to uh, where the valve reliefs are so that you don't screw that up. These are uh, an inch 150 compression height with an inboard piston boss. Even with the larger bore and the dome, uh, these are under 500 grams. We'll weigh them here in a second. We're going to be using some trend. Uh, pretty small diameter wrist pin for, for an FE. These are 927, so it's a small block Chevrolet uh, size, which is what our rods are made for. These weigh about 116 grams. Uh, thick wall thickness, though. So you always do not want the, the lightest wrist pin. Um, it's kind of like push rods. You, uh, you don't want the lightest push rod. You want the heaviest and the most rigid push rod that you can get. Same thing with wrist pins. But uh, that's what these guys are doing right here. These are our connecting rods. R&R uh, &R custom made these for me. So the reason I went with aluminum is because of the weight. These are extremely light, but also because I can have them made at any center to center length that I want. And when you're dealing with such short strokes and such tall deck blocks, uh, if you don't use a long rod, um, I typically use the longest rod that I possibly can anyway on, on some higher end stuff. But if you don't use a, a long rod, the piston ends up being very, very tall. So if you remember back to Project Junkie Junk, the 352, um, same stroke, three and a half inch stroke. Uh, the piston was uh, like an inch 920 compression height. So when you get into domes, when you get into larger bores, you don't want an inch 920 compression height. You want uh, a light piston so that you don't sling a bunch of heavy weight around. But uh, 927 wrist pin, Honda Raw Journal um, for our custom flat plane crankshaft coming in from Lindbergh. So first order of business is to uh, get the pistons measured, get them weighed. I'm going to weigh all the rods. And as I mentioned in past video about balancing a flat plane crank, the crank is balanced from Lindbergh. Uh, since the throws are 180 degrees from each other, 
All we need to do is make sure our uh, bob weights match on, on each slug. So we will get that done. All right, we got all of our pistons measured and weighed and I took the time to go ahead and check the uh, skirt to cylinder wall clearance on the block. We are good. We we're setting at three and a half thousandths on that. Measured or weighed our wrist pins, weighed little ends and big ends of our rods. And uh, as I mentioned before, this is a flat plane crank. The throws are 180 degrees from each other. So the crank will come already balanced. All we have to do is match um, the piston and rod assembly that share each journal or each, each rod journal. So um, we can do that. We can do that across all eight. It'll just take a little bit of finagling with um, mixing and, and matching the weights on the ends. Uh, the wrist pins vary by two tenths of a gram. The pistons vary a little bit. The rods vary a little bit. So um, we'll just take some measurements and uh, pair them up and make sure that we can get uh, within a gram or so of, of matching components on each side of, of the crank. All right, so that took some some time and some math to get everything uh, balanced out, but um, I was able to get pairs opposite each other. So, uh, for instance, number one cylinder, number five cylinder within six tenths of a gram of each other. Uh, number two cylinder, number six cylinder are four tenths of a gram from each other. Number three seven, I'm sorry, number three cylinder and seven cylinder two tenths of a gram from each other and four and eight are one tenth of a gram from each other. So um, that will serve our purposes very well. And uh, I'm gonna start on assembly. Um, it, it was kind of tricky because of the, uh, the valve reliefs are not the same on all the pistons. So I had to be mindful of uh, one. So number one piston on an FE has the exhaust valve on the right side as you're facing it and the intake side on the left side as you're facing it. Um, and number five has the exact opposite. So yeah, one one's right here, one five's right here. So just kind of um, tricky, but we got it done. So I'm gonna start assembly. And the way that I usually start, uh, I've already counted these out to make sure that um, that's another tip I can give. Count out all your pieces so that uh, it's not so critical on these pistons that just take one wire lock on each side, but on something like a diamond piston that takes four spiral locks, um, you know, you need to count out 32 pieces to make sure you have them all or else, you know, you're, uh, you might be faced with a situation that you're on the last piston and you've got, uh, you know, two spiral locks left or something like that. So um, I usually put in, when I'm doing wire locks, I usually put in the one on the right-hand side and then uh, lube my wrist pin up, make sure my rod's facing the correct way, slide the pin in, and then do the lock on the left side. So on forward rods, the chamfer, the big chamfer always goes to your right because it faces the cheek of the crank. You can see the big chamfer on that side, nothing on that side. And here is one piston rod assembly. A lot of aluminum right there. I won't bore you with doing the other seven, so I'll catch you in a few minutes. And here are the fruits to my labor. And um, I like these little piston trays. Uh, keeps everything organized and, and hanging. A whole lot of aluminum sitting right here. But uh, I'll call it quits for this one. Um, can't do much else until the crank gets here. And we're still waiting on that. When it gets here, um, have uh, checked the bearing clearances, and then it'll be on, and we'll get some we'll get some stuff done. But uh, for right now, just one more step, 
completed. Alright guys, thank you for watching. If you haven't done it uh, yet, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out. You definitely don't want to miss out on this uh, tunnel port, uh, flat plane, billet, flat tappet, aluminum rod, DLC coated tool steel lifters, cam tunnel. Uh, <laughs> there's a whole lot going on with this build, so you don't want to miss that. Hit that subscribe button. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Catch you soon.